Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope you have a good day. Today I'm going to paint some more Cthulhu Death May Die, and this is the Dimensional Shambler. He's Zenithal Prime with a black, uh, matte gray primer, and then a top white uh, air paint as well. So I'm using my airbrush to uh, get this miniature ready, and airbrushing is the best results, gets the best results for Zenithal Priming. Uh, so we're starting off with a little bit of Reichlin Flesh Shade here. It's going to be going on the entirety of the miniature, except for where uh, those tentacles are, where they're going through his body and the lower part of his body and the top of his head. If you get those uh, stones that are like sticking out of him, that's okay. We're going to paint over them a little later on anyways. Uh, so this is a monster from Season 2. Uh, he appears in Season 2, I think Episode 4, I believe. Uh, might appear before that, but I think I saw him in Episode 4 show up on the box. And again, in Cthulhu Death May Die, they set it up so well in this game for you to play it because every episode is put into a box with the components that you need for that game. So when you play, a, a, and you can play it, you don't have to play it in order, you, you know, it doesn't carry over, it's not a campaign, it just gets a little bit more difficult, I think, as you play. Uh, so you get to choose your investigators and then go in there and uh, take care of these monsters and prevent Cthulhu from rising or another elder one like yogg Sathoth or whatever. Uh, next we're going to dry brush some Ghoul Grey. This is a unique paint of the army painter made for D&D. &D. Uh, and this is going to go all over uh, the miniature. I'm dry brushing it to get on top of all of that Reichlin Flesh Light to bring out this really ghoulish looking grey color. Uh, and then we're going to move on to... Uh, I did a mix of Apothecary White and Volopus Pink of 3 to 1. So three parts uh, apothecary white, three parts uh, volupus, uh, one part volupus pink. But my goal was is to make it a very, very light, light, light pink. It ended up being a almost light, light purple instead. So I think I should have put a little bit more apothecary white because I just wanted to tint the white a bit more. Uh, quick little dab now, just a volupus pink on the main membranes there sticking out. Some agaras dunes now. We're gonna be putting this on the teeth of this monster, the nails and the uh, toenails. Uh, the, or the claws or whatever you want to call that just to even make it more gruesome looking I, I love this monster. This model is, a, is super cool looking uh, I've seen a few other images of people painting it the same color as Cthulhu which is green and stuff like that I want to follow the artwork. A lot of the artwork though is grey uh, Monsters, but you know you can change up a little bit putting a little bit of gloss varnish now on those tentacles that were protruding from the body Not the top ones just to make them more like gross kind of thing uh, using some alien purple on all of the stones. Now this is the longest part of this miniature because he's got all these like little crystals coming out of him. And it's kind of funny, as I was painting him, he reminded me of Doomsday from Superman. Uh, if he didn't have the tentacles, this would be a perfect Doomsday replica. You know, Doomsday had all these like crystals coming out of him. Uh, and I find he just has the mannerism, the look of, of uh, Doomsday. I don't know, maybe they based it on him. I know Simon does that a lot with their miniatures and their heroes and their investigators and all that stuff. They seem to like base themselves off of uh, lore or uh, old like uh, folk tales or you know like or movie stuff and that. So it's really interesting whenever you start painting these miniatures and you're like, hmm, this reminds me of this. I wonder if it is. I should actually look it up. I never really did look it up to see. Uh, if you guys know, or if you are certain, if maybe it is based on that, are you Cthulians out there? Uh, let, if that's what it's called, I have no idea. Anyways, let me know in the comments, and don't forget to hit that like button, folks. Okay, the more likes, the better it gets put up on YouTube. I know this is an older game, an older miniature, but you know what? Not many people painted this on YouTube. I do my studies beforehand, and I would like to give my take on how I paint this sucker. And it's not Warhammer like everybody else is doing out there. So, you know, I'm different. I'm trying to make this channel very different. And for people who are looking at painting and getting into this hobby for maybe the very first time and are a little uh, put off by all those master painters out there that it just overwhelms them saying, oh my God, it could take me 20 hours to paint one miniature. No, it could take you 15 minutes or 20 minutes to paint one miniature. It could take you five minutes for certain cases. I mean, when you're batch painting, it can take a little longer. Yes, of course, like you got 40 zombies uh, from uh, zombie side. Well, yeah, it's going to take you a while, but speed paint, a little bit of Zenithal highlight, you're good to go. Uh, simple and effective, you know, you don't need to make it all the crazy details. I will detail a little bit these stones coming up in the next color, but the main point was just to get that alien purple. Now, what's cool is that this alien purple seems to have like a gloss finish to it. It doesn't have a matte finish. So they have a shine to them, which is exactly what I want to do, because I would have put that matte varnish on top of them again after. 
uh, but I know that they still shine when they dried uh, quite a bit so I was like okay well this is perfect don't need to put that gloss varnish on don't need to make them like glass looking this looks a little bit more natural with just a, a little bit of a shine to them but man did he have a lot of them on there so you really gotta look everywhere almost every little bump that's coming out of this guy is a gem or stone or whatever it is uh, to be honest, I've, I haven't played Season 2 at all. I've played a few Season 1 episodes. I'm kind of behind in my board gaming here. i got to get some more board games played. i get them more on the table. Um, it is a great game, though. It is well done. I really like it. I enjoy it. Um, yeah, so I don't know if you guys are uh, into Cthulhu. If you've looked at the Season 3 and Season 4 on Kickstarter when it was out back in November, I believe, or December. Anyways, that'll be coming sometime later this year or next year. Who knows? Mutant Hue, so this is a very, very light, light purple, and what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get the edges, so some stippling, I think I'm using a new term here for myself, uh, or a little bit of edge highlighting, which I rarely do, and just getting the edges of all those stones to really make them pop a little bit more, and it dulls down those edges a little bit more, making them a little bit more like crystals. This guy is just looking amazing. You should in, in person. He's just even more amazing. And there you have it, folks. The dimensional shambler is painted and ready for the table to take on those investigators and help summon an elder one. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you all in the next one.